நண்பர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் ப்ராட் யூ பை குருஜி டிவி திஸ் யூடியூப் வீடியோ இஸ் அ டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ஆஃப் த சேனல் வீடியோ ஆஃப் அவர் ரெனோண்ட் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் ஜோதிஷ் மகாகுரு ஆதித்ய குருஜி This video is actually the translated version of the master session taken by our Guruji in the recent conference held in Tirupur. Well, this is astrologer Deepa and I am presenting you the English version of the Tamil video. The following is a question asked by one of the audience, follower of our Guruji during the conference held in Tirupur. Sir, good morning. I have a doubt. When Saturn resides in the 7th house, it gets big bala that is directional strength. You often have shared a point in your videos that it is good when Saturn resides in the 7th house provided the 7th house is not the own house of Saturn or exalted house of Saturn. My doubt is for the native of Aquarius ascendant and for the native of Taurus ascendant when Saturn resides in the 7th house which is its inimical house will saturn act like a hero or villain for example for the native of aquarius ascendant saturn gets dig bala in the 7th house which is leo which is its inimical house and for the native of taurus ascendant saturn gets dig bala in 7th house which is scorpio which is again an inimical house to saturn in the situation will saturn deliver benefits or bad effects Will this big bala deliver bad or good effects? Guruji responds as follows. This question really deserves an applause. This question really comes from a higher perception of astrological concepts. This question comprises a lot of subtle meanings within it. What is the secret about directional strength? The question is for the native of Aquarius ascendant When Saturn resides in the 7th house, Leo, Saturn's enemical house, will it deliver bad or good effects with Digbala strength? And for the native of Taurus ascendant, when Saturn resides in the 7th house, it gets Digbala. But it resides in its enemical house. What effects will it deliver based on this position? You all know that Saturn attains Digbala in the 7th house to the ascendant. I often rate rate in my videos that Saturn should not get own house status or exaltation status. In other words, Saturn should not gain direct strength. When Saturn has no other subatva and it has only Digbala and resides in the enemical house what will happen well another guy from the audience asked me if the situation will be same when sun gets digbala in the 10th house i really appreciate the questions of the audience saturn attains digbala in the 7th house to the ascendant let us come to the point of the sun in another occasion when saturn does not have its own house status or exaltation status and resides in the 7th house it is good You know astrology itself is perceived in a wrong way that when a planet that resides in its own house or in its exalted house will deliver benefits For example for the native of Cancer ascendant when Saturn resides in Capricorn it attains both own house status and it also gains big bala For the native of Leo ascendant when Saturn resides in the 7th house that is in Aquarius it is in its own house and attains Digbala as well I don't want to answer in just one word about whether Saturn will deliver benefits or not Indeed I can just answer the questions of everyone here in just one word which is not my preference at all My motivation is that I choose a question in such a way that it should be useful for many people who are part of the audience and I have to definitely give a detailed explanation that will really enlighten you. 
I would like to bring in more concepts while answering this question. Definitely the answer to this question will benefit 10,000 or even 1 lakh people. I understand the curiosity of the audience and I too will ask a lot of questions if I would be part of audience. In general, it is said that whenever a planet resides in its own house or exaltation status, it will deliver benefits. This is not true. When a malefic planet resides in its own house or exaltation house, it will deliver its karaka completely. Well, what are the karaka Saturn is responsible for delivering? I have written about these concepts in my article Ungal Jadagam Yoga Jadagama. The situation that I am going to explain can be very well relatable to the women in the audience as they are more responsible in managing the house. If a beggar reaches your house in the morning, let me say around 7 a.m. and he begs for some food, what will you give? You will give the last night's food to the beggar enormously. I repeat, imagine that this happens at 7 a.m. in the morning. Will you be able to prepare a good pulao and distribute it to beggars at that time? It is not possible. At, it is not possible at all at that time. A person can give what he possesses, right? It is not possible to give something that you don't possess or that you are not able to give. Saturn will deliver the karaka which it is responsible for giving. In other words, some planets can give happiness and certain planets can give sorrow. This is the fundamental principle of the life itself. Certain planets are destined or responsible for giving happiness and certain planets are responsible for giving sorrow. Some might question instantly that will Saturn not deliver benefits if I am the native of Libra ascendant for whom Saturn is the Raja Yoga Dibadi, the Lord of 4th and 5th house. Or certain will question if Saturn will deliver benefits or not if they are native of Taurus ascendant again where Saturn becomes Raja Yoga Dibadi, Lord of 9th and 10th house. For the native of Libra Ascendant and Taurus Ascendant, Saturn will deliver the benefits of the houses it possesses with the Karaga as well. Indeed, the bad Karaga, which is the one that Saturn possesses. The benefits of the house will be delivered with bad effects of the Karaga. There has been a friend since my childhood and you all know who that friend is. In Tamil Nadu, he has been one of the richest men. He is the number one multimillionaire. But how does he earn money and what is his profession? He earns through the karaka of Saturn, which he hesitates to express. He is native of Libra Ascendant and in his natal chart, the Lord of 5th house and 5th house is debilitated, which is Saturn. Since the Lord of 4th house is debilitated, he did not have a good education in his life. A formal education, let me say. He is not inclined towards education and he does not have a male child, which the 5th house Lord is responsible for. But the very same Saturn which is Raja Yoga Dibadi, gets Digbala in the 7th house. In this natal chart, based on my concepts of Subhatva and Pabhatva, Saturn is aspected by Jupiter, which is of very high strength, which is in Vargotama in Leo. And Jupiter has no affliction at all. And he is undergoing Saturn Dasha. He earns crores and crores of money through the Karaka of the Saturn. In general, if you want to understand astrology, you should not explore the natal charge of Marilyn Monroe 
or Victoria, you will not get the grasp of the subtleties of astrology. Try to explore the natal charts of your neighbors. Try to explore or research the natal chart of your spouse, whether it is husband or wife, your children, your parents, your brothers, sisters. Try to explore the natal charts of the people who are close to you and whose life events are very well known to you. Then you will understand the concepts of astrology at the core level. You don't need to put a lot of research work on why Mandela lived in jail for 27 years. Who knows the real natal chart of Nelson Mandela? If only you know the correct date of birth, time of birth, which is very, very important. And moreover, if only you know or you have witnessed the experiences of the client by yourself, you can research it and such a research will definitely serve its purpose 100%. Therefore, to explain the Digbala, that is directional strength of Saturn, I would like to use the natal chart of my friend as an example. This is the natal chart of my friend, who is number one richest man in Tamil Nadu. He is native of Libra ascendant and Saturn is debilitated in the seventh house and Saturn is not retrograde. Both Saturn and Jupiter or Vargotama in his natal chart. If Saturn is strong, what will it deliver? When Saturn is strong, it will deliver benefits to the native through the house effects. On the contrary, it will deliver worse effects through its significance, that is Karaka. If Saturn has no direct strength in this natal chart, it will not be able to deliver the house effects and it will deliver benefits through its significance. This will be extremely perplexing to you. Indeed, the student who asked this question is listening to my words very keenly. If I was in his position, I would not definitely be patient enough to listen such a long lecture. He is very much interested in astrology and I can see that. And the question asked by him is, what Saturn will deliver when it has Digbala, posited? In its enemical house, which is also a fixed sign, which is owned by Sun or Mars. In order to explain your doubt, I'm giving an example. I'm giving a chart of my friend who is a multimillionaire. If somebody has to be multimillionaire, then the ascendant lord should also be very, very strong. In my friend's natal chart, there are four planets in the 10th house such as Sun, Mercury, Venus and Mars. Mars and Sun get directional strength in his natal chart since it is residing in the 10th house to the ascendant and Venus is not combusted by the Sun which is a significant point to note. Well, one of my followers from the audience is asking a question. So, what is your question? Can you please tell me? Well, he requests to explain about how the major planetary period and minor planetary period has to be predicted. His question is how to predict different events in life during Dasha and Antar Dasha. And let me explain about it. The questions that have been asked my students are when Saturn is getting Digbala in the 7th house, Whereas the house is an enemical house to Saturn, what will happen? And another student asked me how to predict the Dasha and Antar Dasha in a sequence. Let me explain my own life experience as an example. I already predicted that during Rahu Dasha and Rahu Antar Dasha, a female child will be born to me. My wife was also present in this conference. We went to the hospital and visited the doctor to confirm the pregnancy post one month. When I came out of the doctor's consultation room, I told my wife that that will be a female. How can I be an astrologer if I can't predict my own life? 
Of course, my wife was present here when she was one month pregnant. I took her to the doctor to confirm her pregnancy. The doctor checked and confirmed the pregnancy. And my wife is right now laughing at me. He gave some guidelines and as soon as I came out of the doctor's consultation room, I informed my wife that she was going to give birth to a female child. I also named my female child as Nyana Deepika. I predicted much beforehand the birth of my daughter and needless to say, my wife gave birth to a female child. When I make predictions for different clients across the world, I should definitely have the talent to predict my own life events like when I will become a father and whether a female or male child will be born first. In order to explain the order of Dasha and Andar Dasha, I share the experience. My life experience. I also predicted the birth of my second child. I told my wife that during Rahu Dasha and Jupiter Antar Dasha, a male child will be born. Because of the conjunction of Rahu and Jupiter, I predicted that a male child will be born. As I predicted beforehand, my wife gave birth to a male child in 2012. I predicted beforehand the birth of my second child as well. Well, now let me come back to the natal chart of my friend who is a multimillionaire. In his natal chart, Saturn guards Digbala and it is residing in the 7th house which is Aries. My friend has been experiencing almost 10 years the major planetary period of Saturn. And please note that Saturn is not retrograde in his natal chart. He is a native of Libra ascendant. Saturn resides in the 7th house that is Aries and the ascendant Lord Venus, Sun, Mercury and Mars reside in the 10th house which is Cancer and in the 11th house Leo, Jupiter resides. Since Saturn is in the 7th house and Sun is residing in the 10th house, Saturn is not retrograde. If Saturn was retrograde here, it will not have made the native a richest person. Let me explain both the questions of my students, which are the effect of Saturn with Digbala in its inimical house and also the order of events that happens during major planetary period and minor planetary period of the planets. Here Saturn resides in Ashwini first pada and is very strong in many Varga chakras. And Saturn is Vargotama. Jupiter resides in Leo in Puram Nakshatra that is Purva Falguni, first pada and Jupiter is also Vargotama. A very important point to note in this natal chart is Jupiter is not affected or influenced by any other planet. If Jupiter has to make somehow Subhatva or a planet Subhatva, Jupiter should be in its true natural state first of all. It was not supposed to be affected by any other planet. If I have to contribute to somebody else, I should have some money, correct? Merely good intentions are not enough to make a contribution. If I am promising you that I will give 10,000 rupees, definitely I should possess that money. If I don't have 10,000 rupees, what will happen? It will be merely a false promise and when you come to my house, then I will be running away from my house to avoid giving you the money. A planet which makes the other planet Subhatva should be first of all strong, and is not supposed to be affected by other planets. This is a very, very important point because this is the place where many people make mistakes in predictions. 
you should consider all the points in order to make predictions everything put together is complete astrology well the question asked by my student is what will saturn deliver when it is in digbala and it is also residing in its inimical house let me explain this step by step my friend is a multimillionaire he is one of the richest persons in tamil nadu and can you guess the astrological point that explains how he achieved such a status well the original dictum says about mahadan yoga mahadana yoga is caused by the auspicious connection of second house lord ninth house lord and 11th house lord for the native of libra ascendant the lord of the second house is mars and lord of the ninth house is mercury and lord of 11th house is sun these three planets that is lord of second house ninth house and 11th house such as mars mercury and sun are in conjunction in the 10th house and they got subhatva by the conjunction of venus did you get the point now during his jupiter dasha he was in one field and he changed his field during his saturn dasha and is yet to experience mercury dasha i made my predictions already that he will choose another field during his mercury dasha long back he did not believe at all my predictions however in course of time when each of my predictions happened in his life one by one his belief in my predictions finds no limits now during his jupiter dasha itself i predicted that he will be in another business during saturn dasha since the event happened as i predicted he started believing in astrology as well now he strongly believes that during mercury dasha in future the events will happen as per my predictions well in many of the natal charts you can see this mahadan yoga that is connection of second house lord ninth house lord and 11th house lord many people wonder why they do not become multimillionaire despite having this mahadan yoga you have to understand astrology better to know the reason here venus is not combusted by the sun and venus is strong in his natal chart rahu resides in the 6th house that is pisces and in the 12th house in virgo you can see ketu when he was born the remaining dasha period was mars 5 years then came rahu dasha where rahu has no subhatva at all he lived a very ordinary life just like us until 23 years of age he lived a common man's life i hope the one who asked about the effects of dasha and antar dasha got the answer from my explanation now let me explain the antar dasha in detail the native is number one richest man in tamil nadu he is a man of wealth he was born in a very simple family just like us he got all the financial growth in his life by merely hard work and he has been very truthful in life if saturn is subhatva and aspects the ascendant such native will be very very truthful if saturn is very very strong without any subhatva and connected to the ascendant the person will be dishonest see how the prediction differs i explain how a person will behave based on the strength and subhatva of the saturn what happens when saturn gets debilitated all the bad qualities all dishonest qualities of saturn will be completely filtered from saturn when it is debilitated when saturn is debilitated it sheds all the bad qualities and just remains as mere debris and here jupiter acts like a sweetener 
when it aspects Saturn and through its aspect on Saturn, Jupiter adds some honey to the debris. Thus Saturn by the aspect of Jupiter becomes very honest which means here Saturn made the native a very honest person. No better examples can be given to explain the connection of Saturn and Jupiter. Since I understood the subtleties of astrology, I am sharing my knowledge with you. When this native was born, the remaining Dasha period was Mars 5 years and 7 months. Since Saturn is debilitated, it spoiled the 4th house and the 5th house which are owned by it. Well, how did it spoil the 4th and 5th houses? Saturn spoiled the 4th house effect by spoiling its one of the important karaga which is education. The native had no interest in studies when he was young. He was not properly educated and moreover he had no interest in studies. He did not even complete higher secondary studies just like me. Since Saturn is debilitated, it spoiled one of the important karaka of the fourth house which is education. Having said this, Mercury and Moon are in Parivartan in his natal chart. And Saturn also spoils the Jiva Karaka of the fifth house which is progeny. How did it spoil the fifth house effects? The native has no male child. You know the business people definitely want a male child to take over their business in future. Here Saturn spoils the birth of a male child. The native has only female children. You know, in general, the truth is that most men want to have a male child which he cannot deny. Whether it makes sense or not, every father loves to have a male child. And being a very rich man, being a great businessman, he tried all the medical possibilities to have a male child. However, Saturn did not allow any efforts to be fructified to get a male child. He has got only female children and after a particular age he pacified himself and thereupon no medical assistance was sought to get a male child. Since I predicted already that he has no male children, he pacified himself in course of time. He has no male children despite whatever efforts he made. The debilitated Saturn spoils the 4th house FX and the 5th house FX and Saturn is aspected by Jupiter in his natal chart. When he was born, he was undergoing Dasha of Mars. He lived a very ordinary life. He was born in a very simple family. Until 5 years of age, until the end of major planetary period of Mars, he lived a very simple life. And let us see what happened during the major planetary period of Rahu. In his natal chart, you can observe that Rahu has no Subhatva and indeed it is close to Saturn. It has no Subhatva such as aspect of Jupiter or connection of Venus, nothing. And his life has nothing to say. He continued to live such an ordinary life. Even during the major planetary period of Rahu, he lived a common man's life. He is not a person who was born with a silver spoon. This explanation gives answer to another student who asked about how to predict events based on major planetary period and minor planetary period. So you guys had questions regarding Digbala of Saturn in its enemical house and you also asked about how the major planetary period and minor planetary period works and many of you would have a lot of questions in your mind regarding house effects. I hope now the subtleties of astrology are unfolding in front of your eyes. So when I explain the natal chart of a person whom I very well know, with whom I am very well acquainted, many truths unfold. Here Saturn spoiled the house effects of the 4th house and the 5th house. 
you all know that the house effects will be delivered throughout the lifetime and the karaka functions only during its dasha until 23 years or 24 years old he lived a very ordinary life he led a simple life exactly like us and you know i am a person who does not give much importance to yoga i did today a follower from the audience asked a question that i mentioned shivaraja yoga in some of my live videos i beg to differ on a point i suggest to my followers to follow yoga only on certain criteria and not to be totally dependent on yoga that to at the crust level of understanding for making predictions when you see yogas mentioned in the original dictums in the natal chart getting applied or when you try to understand yoga you have to understand the essence and don't try to perceive the yoga at the crust level this is what i suggest to my followers even in this class i mentioned mahadan yoga and i have also mentioned many times about shivaraj yoga in my videos the essence of this mahadan yoga is it will function or one can benefit from this yoga when the second house lord ninth house lord and 11th house lord is connected when the ascendant lord is strong and based on the lagna and the strength of the second bhava ninth bhava and 11th bhava one will become rich at variable levels according to the strength when these second house lord ninth house lord and 11th house lord are connected and based on the subhatva of the second bhava and subhatva of ninth bhava and 11th bhava one will become a multimillionaire and when this will happen when a person will become multimillionaire during the dasha of second house lord or during dasha of ninth house lord or during dasha of 11th house lord a person will become rich another subtlety is the second bhava ninth bhava and 11th bhava will function based on the major planetary period and minor planetary period you can also see this mahadan yoga in this natal chart which exists right from his birth but why he was not rich when he was born why this yoga did not function when he was born he became a multimillionaire only in his later age he was not a multimillionaire when he was born why what is the reason you see when he was younger he experienced only mars and rahu dasha rahu resides in the 6th house and it will function just like jupiter which is a functional malefic to the native of libra ascendant so it totally hindered the financial growth of the native this is how you have to predict the major planetary period and minor planetary period of different planets until 24 years old he was nothing i am very well acquainted with this person since i was a teenager i know very well personally what happened during the major planetary period of rahu and minor planetary period of sun moon and mars during his rahu dasha and mars antar dasha i predicted that after 20 years he will choose a different field as business even now he asked me sometimes how i predicted his profession many 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 years before because nobody was aware of the nature of the business during the period i predicted we both were very young we have only 3 years of age difference between us I also predicted that during the major planetary period of Jupiter mentioning a particular year he will be very famous in his field. Let me tell you about uh, this 6th uh, house, 8th house and 12th house. The 6th house indicates the money that we gain through others and here Jupiter is the lord of the 6th house 
and it resides in the 11th house by this planetary position he chose a particular field where he gained a lot of money through others he started that field from even rahu dasha and venus antar dasha the jupiter just strength equal to own house status which is vargotama gave crores of money to this native during its dasha period during the major planetary period of jupiter itself he gained crores of money and at the end of the major planetary period of jupiter he chose the field related to karaka of saturn which is a liquid i predicted this 20 years ago in total surprise he told me that even when he started this profession related to karaka of saturn he was wondering how my prediction which was told many many years before regarding his business came true during jupiter dasha and rahu antar dasha he ended up the business related to jupiter well i'll give you one minute of time let me ask you questions and you guys can try to answer the jupiter dasha which gave him crores of money did not let the native to continue the same field what is the reason and why he was pushed to choose another business when saturn dasha commenced i will give you one minute of time you think about it and tell me and try to tell the answers no matter whether you feel it to be correct or incorrect answer so please pass the mic to the students to the followers of mine well you are saying that yoga dasha started all right well some say they cannot understand the question you know i have actually written answers to these questions in my articles because these are the natal charts for which i had made predictions long back and de- indeed i shared the knowledge with my followers as well actually the field that this native chose during the dasha of jupiter did not last forever and there was a change in his business at the end of the jupiter dasha and when saturn's dasha started he started another business he is said to experience mercury dasha and i have predicted that he will again change his business when mercury dasha will start in future he has to undergo the saturn dasha for 8 more years i have already predicted that, that during mercury dasha he will choose another field my question is why he left the field that he was into during the major planetary period of jupiter i hope now you understand my question well one of my followers gave the right answer did i give you a clue did i mention that i have written about this already in my articles did that become a clue well the answer is you have to check the status of the 10th house lord as well while you are predicting the occupation or profession of the native the 10th house lord is in the 12th house to the ascendant please applaud him for the answer that he gave and i have written about this point in my article one of the students here asked about how to predict the events according to major planetary period and minor planetary period and let me explain about it when the 10th house lord is in 6th house or 8th house or 12th house they will choose a different profession based on their major planetary period and there will be a shift of profession during antar dasha this is the fundamental concept that is 100% valid if in his natal chart let us imagine moon is in the 12th house to the ascendant and there is no parivartan at all he would have not done any business since moon and mercury are in parivartan and the 10th house lord gains strength he has been doing business there are many many subtleties in astrology it is not a cake walk to make predictions just in 3 days you cannot get a doctorate in astrology and there are many doctorates in astrology who cannot still make a perfect prediction 
there are many people who got a doctorate in astrology 30 years ago and they still blink while they make predictions because this is the knowledge blessed upon us by the almighty if the 10th house lord is spoiled then the person will not be able to do any business and you see in this natal chart moon is in connection with rahu and ketu I always say that if the 10th house lord is weak then every dasha they choose a different profession. Even in antar dasha there is a possibility to change the profession. This is how you have to predict based on the major planetary period and minor planetary period of the planets. Well this student requested me to explain how to predict events based on the major planetary period and the divisions of minor planetary period. In case if there is no parivartan of moon and mercury in this natal chart and moon merely resides in 12th house then definitely this person that is my friend will be working for somebody else and he would have not definitely started his business. You have to also check the strength of the ascendant lord. Astrology is not based on a single rule rather it is a blend of different rules you should not make predictions based on just one bhava one planet and if you do so you are fooling yourself and others so during rashi pala predictions we make general predictions right like you know during transit all those it does not apply 100 percent to every individual even of same rashi if you make predictions based on a single graha, a single house, it is almost like transit predictions which will not apply 100% to the natal. So here in his natal chart, if there is no parivartan of moon and if 10th house lot resides in 12th house to the ascendant without any parivartan, then he is not a multimillionaire. In his natal chart, the moon is a waxing moon. And fortunately, it is not in conjunction with Rahu. In my higher session master classes, I, I don't mention Ketu as the malafic. You all know that in original dictums, Rahu and Ketu are portrayed as malafics. But definitely my followers, my students will add Ketu to the list of benefits in the future. I have researched thousands of natal charts in my life so far. I would have checked even more, like let me say more than 1 lakh natal charts. I don't count how many clients I have. I don't count how many natal charts I have researched. I never thought I would teach you on a public platform. And I had never kept count of how many natal charts I have seen or I have researched in my lifetime. I had never kept count of how many natal charts I have seen or I have researched in my lifetime. From the observation of the natal charts that I have done so far, I will definitely say Ketu is the benefic. What is the reason for this point? Why I say this point? Why do I call Ketu as the benefic? Because only Rahu has the character to spoil the house where it resides. Ketu has the ability to grow the bhava where it resides. Try to observe the natal charts. Try to examine this point in the natal charts you see in day-to-day -day life. You check in the natal charts whether Rahu spoils the 7th house while it resides in the 7th house or if K2 spoils in the 7th house, if it resides there. Suppose if you still notice that K2 spoils the marital life, being in the 7th house, definitely you should see whether K2 receives the aspect of Saturn or Mars. Because K2 will act as a benefit when it is alone. When Ketu has no malafic connection, it works as a benefic. Ketu acts just like a mirror or a very clear pure water that reflects everything. Whatever you do with the mirror, it is going to reflect. 
Suppose if you paint the mirror with the black color, it is going to be smushed. When you pass a beam of light on the mirror, it is going to reflect that light. This is how Ketu will function. When Ketu receives an auspicious light, it will function like a great benefit. Here Ketu is in conjunction with the waxing moon. Moon is in Parivartan. Therefore, we conclude that the 10th house lord has good strength. During 16 years of Jupiter Dasha, he earned crores of money and at the end of the Jupiter Dasha, he was in a great oscillation of mind about what business will be next. Because he was leading in the field that was delivered by the Jupiter, he was leading as number one or two in his business. So he was curious, he was anxious that what business could be next where he wanted himself to be in number one position. By the grace of Almighty, though the business he did during Jupiter Dasha came to an end, he shifted to another business related to cargo of Saturn, which is liquid. The business he was doing during Jupiter Dasha was completely stopped. It was hindered within the Jupiter Dasha. There was a great obstacle that he could not carry his business forward even till the end of Jupiter Dasha. When there was a great obstacle to his business that he was running during Jupiter Dasha, fortunately Saturn Dasha commenced and there was a huge changeover in business related to Karaka of Saturn during Saturn Dasha and now he leads as number one in his business. And I have predicted also what will happen during his Mercury Dasha in future. I predicted that he will definitely change his business in future during Mercury Dasha. There are many people who do not believe astrology at the beginning. But gradually they will start believing astrology very very strongly. Even Mr. E.K. Dilip just now told that he did not believe in astrology initially and he wanted to learn it to know whether astrology, Vedic astrology is true or not. When I predicted what business he would do during Saturn Dasha beforehand, he did not believe me initially. Astrology has always been my aspiration. But he did not believe my prediction. But in course of time, when events happened, based on the predictions that I made for every Antar Dasha, he started believing astrology very strongly. This is the reason I always say, like you have a family doctor, like you have family lawyer, you should have a family astrologer, provided the astrologer is really wise. If the astrologer is wise, then he will definitely help you and he can warn you about certain things ahead of time in your life. Like he will give you a warning not to start a business because the forthcoming Antar Dasha might be bad. He might also give advice or suggestions to start a business because the forthcoming Antar Dasha will help you greatly. It is possible that a wise astrologer can predict the events based on Antar Dasha ahead of time. During Rahu Dasha initial phase, this native did not believe in astrology at all. He was young at that time. Do you know when he started believing in astrology? Any guesses? He started believing in astrology during the major planetary period of Rahu and minor planetary period of Moon. At around 21 or 22 years old, he started believing in astrology and gradually it is increasing. And he started to believe in astrology even more when Jupiter Dasha started. Well, now let us come to the point of Digbala. Let me answer your question. Here Saturn has got Digbala and it resides in its inimical house Aries. Let us imagine a situation where Saturn resides in the 7th house which is retrograde. What is retrograde? Retrograde is a state which is contrary to its natural state. If Saturn resides here as retrograde, then it would have not functioned as it functions now to the native. He would have got educated very well and he would have got male children and definitely his salary 
will be around rupees fifteen thousand. Do you understand? This native would have got very well educated if Saturn was retrograde. He would be a salaried person. He would have definitely completed a post graduation degree like MBA. And would have definitely got male children because Saturn here is in debilitation status and retrograde. When Saturn has got good strength, for example, let us say it is exalted for the native of Libra ascendant, it will have definitely delivered the responsibility of the fourth house and fifth house completely. What are the responsibilities of the fourth and fifth houses? The native will definitely get a good education and male children. Let us not change the ascendant and let it be Libra ascendant and Saturn resides in the ascendant house itself being exalted. What will happen if Saturn is exalted in the ascendant? He will have definitely completed post graduation. Or research like you know he would have done MBA, PhD and he will have definitely have male children because you have to make predictions based on the point that 4th house lord and 5th house lord is exalted. As a result he would have done some research etc. But the point to note here is he would have not definitely become a multi-millionaire. Yeah one of my students from the audience says it's true. He knows a person who is Libra ascendant and Saturn is exalted and the native has a good profession and male children. However, he is not a multimillionaire. You see, I don't need any approval for my predictions. I don't doubt at all my predictions. I sometimes doubt only the natal charts that is the date of birth, the time of birth and never my predictions. In case my prediction goes wrong, I can definitely say the natal chart, date of time is not correct. I am such a confident astrologer. Many people sometimes say that they don't have Subhatwa of the 8th house or 12th house, yet they reside in USA. What is the reason? It is nothing but the incorrect birth time. Instead of feeding the time as 1 o'clock, they would have given the time as 1.05. So the ascendant obviously changes. Even with the difference of 5 minutes, the ascendant changes. You all know it. Only in such situation, they predict the events incorrectly. The prediction goes wrong. Whatever concepts I explain to you now are very, very certain and valid. Since Saturn is not exalted in the natal chart of my friend, Saturn shed all its bad karaga like the worst mind, offensive acts, offensive behavior and all the bad significance such as even poverty. What are the significances of Saturn? Karaka of Saturn. Poverty, disease, deceit. What will happen when somebody is very poor? Of course, the person will borrow money. Obviously, there will be some incurred debts. The natives who Saturn is very strong, behave all weaning. Like they think about themselves too highly. They know everything. I don't hesitate to say openly the bad karaka of Saturn. Indeed, being an astrologer, I have to definitely point out the good and bad karakas of a planet. This might hurt those whose Saturn is very strong without Subhatva. Certain people portray themselves as God. These people even sometimes threaten others by showing themselves as very superior. You can find such people in few villages where they portray themselves as God and expect others to understand them, follow them. The people whose Saturn is very strong definitely believe they are super intelligent Yes, they will believe so. Only others know that they are foolish. These are contradictions of life. I recall an event that happened 10 years ago. There was a very famous psychologist. 
when i was young i was quite free and i had a lot of time where different people communicated regularly over the phone with me during such a period there was a person who called or who portrayed himself as a god propagated himself as god and he is no more a famous psychologist with whom i was very well acquainted was discussing about that guy who portrayed himself as god the psychologist told that the god man was not just pretending to be god for money sake rather he deeply believed himself to be god and he had some mental problems the psychologist told me guru ji please don't mistake him he is not a corrupted person rather he believes himself to be god and he has some serious mental problems he is not pretending to be god he certainly believes himself to be god and he does not hesitate to express himself in public as well as god the people who match his frequency go and follow him if you look into his eyes you can definitely feel that he does not pretend at all because he himself strongly believes that he is god and the psychologist categorizes this as a mental problem in the same way the native who saturn is very strong completely believes himself to be super intelligent but in reality he is a fool and needless to say he is surrounded by foolish people and that is what the native also prefer these people will involve in sophistry which is nothing but the use of clever but false arguments with the intention of deceiving another they don't hesitate to make unfair arguments and these people talk excessively in general saturn will deliver these karagas when it is exalted the karagas that saturn will deliver when it is exalted or poverty disease deceitful nature debts super confidence about oneself that they are brilliant excessive blabbering please don't get upset in whose natal chart saturn is in its own house or an exaltation house beyond this the planet will deliver its effects based on subhatva and pavatva so will saturn deliver benefits through its karaka when it has directional strength that is digbala here is the answer when saturn has digbala and has got own house status or exalted it is not good because this will deliver the unpleasant karaka of saturn this bad karaga will be more when saturn has got digbala and the own house or exaltation status what saturn will deliver poverty disease deceitfulness debts and sophistry when it will deliver benefits all these bad karaga should be filtered from the saturn in other words saturn should be weak when saturn is debilitated or weak its bad karagas are filtered if saturn has to give good behavior to the native saturn should be weak and it must also have subhatva such as aspect of jupiter in this situation saturn will deliver extreme benefits through its good karaga a person who saturn is very very strong cannot run a hotel i repeat a person whose natal chart saturn is very strong cannot do a business related to food service what is the reason because a person in whose natal chart saturn is very very strong cannot express his profession in public with pride and if saturn delivers a business through its karaga the native will hesitate to disclose about it in public there are some people whose business involves supplying of bathroom toilet accessories i have met certain businessmen who hesitate to express such a business 
a person cannot say it with great pride as an ias officer says about his profession flaunts about his profession it is easy to express if a person does food service but if you ask a person about the profession who is running a bar he will have some hesitation in disclosing it at least there will be a hesitation of 10 seconds after which they will open up a person will be happy to say if they are doing a food service in their town and they will be happy to express it the person will say by the grace of god is doing the business but those who are running a bar or a liquor shop cannot say definitely by the grace of god he is running the bar business greatly this is the reason i often say that saturn gives professions that one will hesitate to express to others these concepts are not found even in original dictums these are the words i personally chose from the experience of communicating with many people of different professions have you come across the word that saturn delivers a profession that one will hesitate to disclose you would have definitely not come across such words because these come from my experience where i meet different clients with different professions and i observe a lot and choose the right words to teach you sometimes saturn will deliver the occupation that has to be done with patience and in a slow manner even these are not present in the original dictums what are the original dictums and explanatory books these were also written by the people who had great drishti and greater wisdom than us my students will one day explore more than what i have done you can also coin many words in astrology having said this when saturn is debilitated the bad qualities are reduced or filtered what are the bad qualities adamant deceitfulness cheating others and more importantly jealousy saturn strong people will definitely check how others live more than focusing about their own life they will never be contented with what they have rather they will always compare with others though the native is multi millionaire a big shot though they possess a lot of precious valuable things lot of properties cars they will not have good sleep if the neighbors are living a better life if you see such a peer pressure over a person it means that saturn is strong in their natal chart if a girl possess hundred sovereigns of gold it not getting good sleep it not satisfied just because of contemplating how her neighbor another lady got merely five sovereigns of gold it is because of saturn you see how such a unfair comparison it is such a girl will definitely be native of saturn ascendant or connection of saturn to the ascendant where saturn is strong or at least saturn will have connection with rashi because when saturn is strong it will not give a contented life so saturn delivers poverty disease jealousy deceitfulness etc the people who saturn is very strong will definitely feel they are super intelligent and they will make unfair arguments such a saturn getting debilitated is good what does it indicate when saturn is debilitated it will be in a state that it cannot deliver any of the natural karaka that i listed now it is good so here when saturn is debilitated it will be in a state not only weak to deliver its karaka but it will also be weak to deliver the fourth house effects and fifth house effects in this natal chart shall i go even deeper into this concept will you able to understand I hope you guys can understand. Well, let me ask a question. When Saturn is debilitated, I said it cannot deliver disease, deaths, deceitfulness, overconfidence, sophistry to the native. 
in this natal chart since saturn gets aspected by jupiter it delivers certain benefits to the native while it delivered benefits to the native through its significance why it could not deliver the fourth and fifth house effects such as good education and male children can anybody tell the answer yes i got an answer from my follower so please come up to the stage another follower from the audience is giving me an answer no it is not the right answer sir anyway i really appreciate your efforts does anybody think that why saturn cannot deliver its responsibility as the fourth house lord and fifth house lord but it can deliver benefits through its karaka do you know the reason that why i'm standing in front of you as a renowned astrologer this is how i contemplate the reasons for every event that happens in life to become an expert in any field it demands a lot of research you have to think about every concept i repeat the question it is a bit complicated and i know definitely at least one from audience will tell me the answer please don't hesitate to tell the answer you don't need to worry about whether the answer is correct or incorrect even if it is incorrect i will definitely appreciate your efforts because making efforts is a significant quality first of all try to understand the question here saturn is debilitated so it became weak i have already said that when saturn becomes subhatva it will deliver some benefits through its karaka of course the native was earning crores of money related to the profession of karaka of saturn the major planetary period of saturn is delivering a lot of benefits to the native if only saturn is in good status it will be able to deliver benefits through its karaka from the events of the life of this native we understand saturn is in a good status well my question now is while it delivers benefits through its karaka how come it failed to do its duty as fourth house lord and fifth house lord because this native was not well educated and he does not have male children it is a very sensitive question one of my followers from the audience is giving an answer so please come up to the stage what you said is correct he gave the very exact answer that i expected from you guys he has really contemplated every concept of astrology please applaud him for his efforts and of course he told the right answer he understood my question though many students did not even understand my question the aspect of the jupiter strengthened saturn but it did not strengthen the fourth and fifth house this is such a wonderful answer this is the way every intelligent astrologer is budding up since i push you to research the events many people are contemplating about the subtleties of the astrological concepts since i questioned myself about many concepts i'm here in front of you to teach these you have to also consider the degree of the planets to make the best predictions while this native got married very early Jupiter did not aspect the fourth bhava or fifth bhava. I have already published an article regarding this client's natal chart and please check it out. Well, one of my students is questioning about Indu lagna. You know, it is said if only a benefic resides in Indu lagna, it will deliver benefits. So please don't apply this rule. It is not applicable in this natal chart. benefits will be delivered if only a benefic is residing in the indu lagna but here you have to consider saturn as a benefic because it is debilitated and it has got the aspect of jupiter do you know what is the concept of indu lagna of the great poet kalidas 
The great poet Kalidasa insists that a benefic should reside in the Hindu Lagna or at least a benefic should aspect the Hindu Lagna. Well, now here, should we consider Saturn here as a benefic or a malefic? Well, I'm asking about whether Saturn in this natal chart behaves like a natural benefic or natural malefic. Of course, it is a complex question. I consider Saturn here as a natural benefic because in reality, the native is living a very comfortable life. He is very truthful. He is indeed living a luxurious life. If only Saturn's bad rays were not filtered, it will work as a malefic. But here, Saturn is out and out benefic. It has got directional strength and it is not retrograde. And it is in a state where all its bad karakas were filtered. In this natal chart, the Bhava was not made Subhatva by Jupiter. In this natal chart, Jupiter resides in Puram, that is Purva Falguni, first Pada. In this natal chart, the fifth Bhava did not receive the aspect of the Jupiter because of the degree of Jupiter's position in Leo. Consequently, Jupiter did not make the house a Subhatva, rather it made Saturn Subhatva. If fifth house had received the aspect of Jupiter and got Subhatva, definitely he would have got male children. Based on the degree, the fifth Bhava did not get Subhatva. Only the Karaka of Saturn got Subhatva. If only there is an aspect of Jupiter within 8 degrees, the Bhava will get Subhatva. If it crosses the 8 degrees, then Subhatva is not applicable to that particular house. This is a very important point. We saw a lot of concepts in this natal chart and you definitely have to consider the strength of Jupiter in this natal chart. In this natal chart, Jupiter resides in its friendly house Leo and has got very good strength. It resides in its most friendly house and it is also in Vargotama. It is almost equal to the aspect of exalted Jupiter. It is next to the state of exalted Jupiter since it has got Vargotama. Actually, when Jupiter resides in Pisces or uh, Sagittarius, its aspect will have the strength next to the level of exalted Jupiter. In his natal chart, Jupiter resides in his most friendly house and has also got Vargotama. Therefore, it has got the strength just to the... Therefore, it has got the strength just next to the level of exalted Jupiter. This is the way you have to gauge the strength of the planet. Jupiter is Vargotama and it resides in the most friendly house. The highlight or the significant point to note here is Vargotama. Jupiter, Mars, Mercury have a great understanding with the house of Leo. I will definitely explain about the aspects of the planets in my online classes and I am going to explain based on many astrological concepts such as degrees as well. I will definitely teach you in the online sessions in future. When you come to higher level of learning, it is easy to understand all those and definitely I will make sure that I teach such concepts. It might take six months more to teach such concepts. I am going to definitely teach about the aspect of the planets in my online classes. And you can explore many more concepts when I take those lessons. The 4th and 5th house did not get Subhatva because these houses are missing the aspect of Jupiter within 8 degrees and only the Saturn got Subhatva, so its Karaka got Subhatva. Based on Subhatva of the Karaka of Saturn, the major planetary period of Saturn delivered all the benefits to the native. This is the truth and I hope you all understood the concepts and both my followers got the answers to their questions. If you have doubts, please write it in the comment section of this video. Please find the link of the Tamil version in the description box of this video. Write your feedback to astro.writetous at gmail.com. Thank you.